Welcome to another community chat. My name is Kevin Tachi. I will be your host for this segment and a series of conversations with the candidates that are running for select board. This is for a special election being held on Saturday, September 21st. Uh, I will tell you now and I'll remind you at the conclusion of our conversation that if you're not sure of your voting status, where to vote, how to vote, early voting, any of the above, contact the town clerk's office at Town Hall. They will be happy to give you all the necessary information. Joining us for today's conversation is Matthew Lynch. Uh, Matt is a candidate for the select board seat. Welcome to the conversation. Thank you for having me. Let's, uh, let's start off with, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, of course. Um... I grew up here in the South Shore, I'm 27 years old, and I've lived here pretty much my entire life. I grew up in the town of Hanson and have kind of moved around Whitman, Abington, and this is just kind of where I've ended up. I've been living in Abington for the past three years, and I have to say it's an absolutely fabulous town. What led you to want to run for public office, and if you're successful, what are some of your goals? So. I've always had a desire to kind of serve my community, serve my country. I just kind of haven't found that right place. And I feel like at this point in my life, public office might be that right place. You know, really put myself out there and become a servant of the people. You mentioned you've been here about three years. Yes. Uh, what made you choose Abington? And what are some of the things that you do to support local businesses here in Abington? Yeah, part of uh, why I chose to move to Abington is me and my wife were looking for, you know, a nice place that was close to our jobs, that was safe, you know, a good place with a good school district where we could potentially start a family of our own. And Abington kind of checked off all those boxes for us. What about as far as supporting local business? Uh, when it comes to supporting local business, I'm always a, a shop local kind of person. If I can avoid buying it online, I will always try and find a brick and mortar storefront before I'll buy anything online. Okay. Um, have you had a chance to not either look at the town charter um, or find out what the definition is as to how, um, what the role is of a select board member? So I haven't had a chance to look at it in depth. It's been a combination of, you know, my own kind of reading on my free time as well as, you know, what other people have been telling me is the job of the selectmen in this town. So I think I have a pretty good idea, but yeah. What would you, what would you say you think, what is your thought, what the, what the, the role is of a select board member? Uh, from what I've seen, it's the select board's uh, job to basically pass laws, ensure that our budget is nice and solid, and you know, also listen to what the people of the town actually want to happen in the town. You know, what changes they want to make, what changes they don't want to happen, things like that. Okay. Early indication, we're talking finances here, uh, the, the financial forecast for fiscal 26 is that we could see a, a shortfall, which may lead to Cuts, financial cuts, uh, we could also see layoffs. Uh, would you favor a prop two and a half override or do you feel that the, that the finance committee in the town should do all that it can to make necessary cuts without harming services? I think that the services are extremely important. I don't think that they should be interrupted if possible. However, you know, cuts to certain areas probably be necessary and in my honest opinion might might be sorely needed you know over the last few years we've been getting absolutely squeezed on taxes and it just feels like it's non-stop so if we have to make some difficult cuts then we will okay um talking staying on point regarding budgets trash and waste 
seem to be uh, occupying its share, not only of the fiscal 25 budget, which we're currently in now, mm -hmm. but it's also going to promise to be a sizable expense for fiscal 26. Should the town consider a user fee or just stay with the current system it has? What is your opinion? Well, I'm sure that we could probably stay with the current system, but look deeper into what exactly is causing it to cost our our taxpayers so much money. You know, are there things that could be modified rather than outright eliminated to try and bring that cost down? Okay. Um, water is a key to economic development. Uh, right now, Abington has water issues, whether it's PFAS, which the town has spent a lot of money in purchasing filters to try to clean its drinking water, also supply and demand. What are your thoughts as to these issues, whether it's PFAS or finding an ample supply of water uh, to continue grow in this community? That, that's honestly a very difficult question because I, I know for sure I've been having you know, my own issues with the drinking water. Mm. We, you know, ha have to rely on bottled water just out of, you know, concern there for the PFAS that's in the water. You know, I guess it could be a question of where exactly is it coming from? How How is it maintaining such high levels in the water? You know, is there any sort of pollution runoff that might be causing it that we could try and track down rather than trying to put a Band-Aid on the problem with the filters. Okay. Uh, if you're a board member, mm. what are your thoughts on how the town and the departments deliver services, and how do you see yourself becoming a part of those services? Frankly, I, I want to hear from the, the people of Abington. You know, the services that the town provides are absolutely essential to keeping this town as great as it is. You know, and I think that our open line of communication with the select board members is really important to keeping this town in the state. Okay. Um, now that there's a new mass developer for the former Naval Air Station, what are your thoughts in regards to Southfield and how Abington's parcel land is being developed? I was actually unaware that we owned part of that uh, Naval Air Station. So I, I do look forward to seeing what ideas could be put forward for how it could be developed. Would you be, uh, are you the type of person that would be more prone to wanting to see commercial development over residential or some folks would rather just leave it conservation land and leave it like a, a like we grow a town forest. I mean, we, we have, you know, enough parks and conservation lands in this town and, you know, we do a good job at keeping them clean. I think that, you know, possibly a, com a combination of both commercial and residential could be put up in that area, maybe create a small commerce zone. Okay. Uh, housing or lack of affordable homes seems to be a major concern throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, what are your thoughts in regards to the newly expanded Route 18, which it went from two lanes, now it's four lanes. Um, should the town consider either rezoning for housing purposes or maybe for commercial purposes and luring big box stores to come in and add those tax dollars to the rolls? I'm almost wondering if maybe big box stores wouldn't be the right way to go. Maybe if we tried to encourage more members of the community to start their own businesses, because then we'd have a combination of that increased tax revenue from the new small businesses, as well as helping our locals to succeed. Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the education. Social Votech. Yes is uh, seeking a, a vote f t uh, this coming January from the membership towns about building a new school. Now, I know that you are a grad, a proud grad of uh, South Shore Votech. 
Uh, talk to me about uh, supporting their endeavor uh, to build a new school. I think that that school has been in desperate need of a remodel for a very long time. I mean, the, the school is 80 years old, I believe, something in that ballpark, and it, it can't hold the amount of students that desire to go there. You know, they need a larger school, they really do. I'm actually also part of the, um, I, I go there and I volunteer my time as an expert in my field to the teachers to help give them ideas of how to correct the curriculum moving forward for what business owners are looking for skill sets, you know? And the IT, I'm an IT guy by trade and I'm part of the IT program. I Every six months I go there and speak with the teachers and, you know, I give my input on how the IT field is changing. And there's a lot of kids nowadays that are expressing interest in moving into the IT field. They need larger classrooms. You know, their current class sizes are just far too cramped. Okay. Uh, again, staying with, with education, knowing that the town has just voted to fund a new DPW and fire station uh, building project, there are thoughts that possibly the next capital project could be replacing the two aging elementary schools, that's the Beaverbrook and the Woodsdale School. Do you think the town can afford another project of this magnitude? Or is it something that, in your opinion, the town should possibly wait until the financial future is a little brighter? I think it's a question of why exactly do we want to try and push for these new elementary schools? You know, when you say that they're aging, aging in what ways? You know, do they just need a new roof? Or do we have too many students coming in that these schools are at capacity, that they need more space? Or is it a situation of the infrastructure that was used to build the school is just so outdated that it's no longer safe? You know, are there things that rather than building a new school, we could instead modernize? That might cut down on the cost significantly if we can maintain the old buildings, but just bring them up to modern standards. Okay. Uh, to your knowledge, what is the town's biggest need or known issue, and what should town officials do to address it? I think the largest issue, at least for the time being, is possibly the upcoming MBTA housing, the thing that the state has been pushing on every town and the thing that many towns are starting to fight back. You know, I think that it's really not going to help the towns. It's gonna to bring in a lot of, a lot of uh, lower income families, potentially a lot of crime, and a lot of kids that are then going to go into our schools and the state isn't gonna provide any additional funding. It's really a danger that people don't see, but we can already see the effects of it actually in the town of Hanson. They have already constructed uh, their low income housing and the buildings are already starting to crumble because the contractors did not follow town building codes. They were able to completely bypass them under word of the state. And now it's creating a danger to not only the people that live in the town, but the people that live in those buildings. Okay. Um, topic or issue that we did not discuss but you want to take a moment to talk about, or maybe there's something we talked about, but maybe you might want to expand upon an earlier topic. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think I actually was able to, uh, to cover a lot of, you know, my main concerns, things that I want to see change. Okay. Uh, if folks want to find out more about you, they want to reach out to you, they want to get involved with your campaign, how can they do that? Whether it's website, social media, email, um, actually, as of right now, I, I don't really have much in, uh, in terms of, you know, social media. I guess you could try and find my own personal social media, just Matthew Lynch on, uh, on Facebook. Uh, it's a picture of me dressed up like this with my dog. <laughs> what kind of a dog? I have a three-year-old Belgian Malinois. Very nice. Very nice. 
Well, I want to thank you for taking time to sit down and talk a little bit about the, the issues and, and introduce yourself to the voters of Abington. Thank you very much for having me. You got it. We want to thank you for tuning into a program like this. Again, the idea is to better inform you, the voter, about the candidates and where they stand on some of the issues. As a reminder, if you're not sure as to your voting status, uh, about early voting, or anything in regards to the upcoming Saturday, September 21st election, contact the town clerk's office. In regards to anything that we do here at Abington Camp, whether you want to volunteer, get involved, or maybe have an idea for a program, info at abingtoncamp.tv. Until our next conversation, have yourself a good day. Thank you.